Good evening, I'm Pastor John Kasuf, and we'd like to welcome you to this very special evening for us, the evening of uh, gathering around this Zoom conference on this National Day of Prayer. To help us tonight, we would ask that you would do a few things. One is that you be sure that your microphone is muted, and unless you're one of those selected to serve as one of the prayer leaders, if you'd also take your camera and have that closed also. To do this effectively, just putting your cursor over the screen, you'll see down in the bottom left the word mute and stop video. And you just need to click on both of those and you'll go to a black screen. That's helpful. And also down in the bottom center, after you scrolled across with your cursor, you see the chat box. Please use the chat box if you'd like to put in a prayer request for us this evening. Uh, you'll just click on that and a white box should appear and you'll be able to, in the in the white box, type a prayer request that we'll use at the no, conclusion of our time together. We want to keep you muted. That's important. And uh, finally, at the top of your screen in the right-hand corner, you will see the word speaker view. If you would click speaker view, you will see then the individual who's speaking at the time, they're the ones who will pop up on your screen. And, and so uh, that Brady Bunch family look, as we've heard it said, will disappear and it'll just be a row of, of smaller pictures across the top. So speaker view should get you the person who's actually speaking. And uh, again, I'm Pastor John Kasuf. We are blessed that you would take the time to gather this evening. We have 31 who are logged on so far, and we suspect a few more may be joining us as we gather today to pray for our nation in a very specific and intentional way. I wanna thank the elders that have agreed uh, at a meeting not too long ago, those that were present at that meeting signed on and said they'd help, and for Pastor Travis Guzzi. All right, to get us started here with our actual content, Linda Gagian, who serves us well as our prayer team coordinator at our church, we'd like to unmute her mic, or she can unmute that and ask her to uh, uh, continue with our meeting this evening. Thank you, Pastor Kasuf. Good evening and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church's National Day of Prayer event. For those who do not know me, I'm Linda Gagan, the prayer coordinator here at Redeemer. I want to thank every one of you for participating in this very important day of prayer. James 5.16 says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We are righteous because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross by redeeming us through faith in him. There is a power of praying in Jesus' name as the body of Christ. Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. There is no more important time to pray, especially for our nation, than now during these strange and perilous times we seem to be living in. The National Day of Prayer is the first Thursday in May of every year. Because of the faith of many of our founding fathers, public prayer and national days of prayer have a longstanding and significant history in American tradition. The Supreme Court affirmed the right of state legislatures to open their sessions with prayer in the case of Marsh versus Chambers in 1983. Days of prayer have been called for since 1775 when the Continental Congress designated a time for prayer and forming a new nation. The National Day of Prayer was established as an annual event by an act of Congress in 1952 and was signed into law by President Truman. President Reagan amended the law in 1988, designating the first Thursday of May in each year as a National Day of Prayer. I would now like to introduce our guest speaker for this evening, 
and who is also the person who orchestrated this event on Zoom, Pastor Travis Guzzi. Pastor Guzzi is a native of the great Northwest, having been raised in Idaho Falls, Idaho. He completed his undergraduate studies at Concordia University in Portland, Oregon. In 2002, he completed his Master's of Divinity with an emphasis in outreach and church planting at Concordia Seminary, St. Louis, Missouri. Since 2016, Pastor Guzzi has served as the Mission Engagement Facilitator for the Southeastern District Central Region Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, a ministry which is focused on inspiring, equipping, and empowering the priesthood of all believers to begin to connect with and bless their neighborhoods for the sake of the kingdom of God. Prior to this, he served as pastor of the very congregation where he came to faith in Christ as a youth, St. John Lutheran Church in Idaho Falls, Idaho. His greatest passion has been to reach out with Christ's love to those who are hurting and broken in this world. He lives with Stephanie, his wife of 25 years, and Kendall, his 17-year-old son. Welcome, Pastor Guzzi. Thank you very much, and it's uh, wonderful to be able to be here uh, with you all tonight. Uh, I know that with this COVID health crisis, uh, there was some thought that uh, maybe we would cancel the event, but the wonderful thing that we have uh, at our disposal now is technology where we can still gather from distances. And even though we have to maybe be socially apart, it doesn't mean that we have to be relationally apart. And especially as we come together this night uh, for this National Day of Prayer. Um, this evening, uh, as we come to this National Day of Prayer, and hopefully you can see the what I've got on the screen, I want to share a message with all of you uh, tonight. And the message that I would like to focus on is the theme, Thy Will Be Done. And for our evening, thinking about this theme of Thy Will Be Done in prayer, uh, there are some words I'd like to share with you from 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, in which we hear this. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. The, the first thing that this passage from uh, the epistle of, of the apostle John, 1 John, speaks about is, is he writes because he wants to assure us, he wants us to have confidence that we who believe in the name of Jesus, we who trust in who Jesus is and what he has done for us by his life, his death, and his resurrection, that we have eternal life. And in fact, that's the purpose of the Gospels, the Epistles, uh, the, all of Scripture. It is to speak of who God is and his love for the world, so much that he would send his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to give his life for the sake of the world, that we might know his life for now, and life that would lead into eternity as well. Now, now with this, it is knowing that we are have eternal life in Jesus, knowing who Jesus is and what he's done for us, that we now have confidence that we can approach God and, and we can invite, uh, he, we're invited to ask anything we want. And so we're, we have a caveat, though, that when we come to God in prayer, is that we can ask, but, but it's with the caveat, anything according to his will. And the promise is that he, he will hear us. Um, and we can trust that um, not only will he hear, but he will answer that prayer as well, uh, because he is a good and loving father. But I think that's one of the things that, that when we come to prayer, though, is uh, sometimes we, we can forget that part of thy will be done. Oftentimes, we live lives of my will be done. Uh, we, we've lived that for quite a long time in our American uh, culture here in the U.S. Uh, this COVID-19 crisis, though, has seriously kind of uh, put a damper and restrictions on this idea of thy will be or my will be done. So much so that, uh, you know, we now find many of our uh, freedoms that we've had day in and day out that have been curtailed uh, in some major serious ways. 
Uh, but I think a lot of times when we approach God with a, an approach of, of my will be done, it's, it's almost like we view God like the big vending machine in the sky. And if we could just put enough quarters in there, enough prayers, that we'll get what we want. God, give me a good job. Give me a good wife. Give me a, a good car. But, but what we're encouraged to remember is, yes, God wants us to bring our requests and our petitions to him. But it's always with the caveat. It's always with the understanding that God has the final say. Thy will be done. In fact, we hear this, don't we, when we pray that prayer that uh, Jesus taught, taught his disciples and teaches us. It's, it's a model of prayer that comes from Matthew chapter 6. That either could be a prayer for those times that you just have no other words to pray. That it's the perfect prayer that you can pray. Uh, I know there have been times in my life that, that it's been hard just to get the words out. And the only thing that I have at my disposal in those moments are these words that Jesus has given to us of how we should pray. But it also becomes a model of how we pray. It, it becomes an outline of, of the types of things and the petitions and the themes that we should keep in mind when we come to God in prayer. So whether in whole and, and we pray it as Jesus taught us or we use it as a guide, it, it is an incredible um, uh, way that we can come before God and we can lift up our petitions and know the types of things that we should be praying for. And so Jesus teaches us, our Father uh, in heaven, hallowed be your name, recognizing that God is our Father and, and his name is holy. And then we hear these words, your kingdom come, or thy will be done, your, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive those we have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the key I really want to focus in on is after our Father and holy be thy name is your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. You know, as Luther in the small catechism, if you remember back to your catechism days uh, in confirmation, um, where Luther writes on this and he asks the question, the good Lutheran question, what does this mean? And he writes this, when we pray thy will be done on earth as is, is in heaven, that what we're doing is we're saying that the good and gracious will of God will be done without our prayer. God's will is going to be accomplished whether we pray this prayer or not. But what Luther goes on to say is, but when we pray this petition, what we're praying is that it may be done among us as well. That when we pray, many times I think we think that when we come to God in prayer, it's more about trying to get God on board with our agenda in life. My will be done. Now, now, there are times and examples in Scripture in which it, it does show that prayer seems to have an influence on God to move and to act. Uh, for example, we think about uh, Abraham praying for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and he kind of uh, does this, this bargaining and, and negotiating down uh, to, to say, God, if you just find five righteous people, will you spare the city? And it seems that God does move according to prayer and, and relents. But we also know that at the end of the day, what we pray for is not so much to move God to our will, but it's more about moving our wills to God's will. It's about us aligning our hearts, our minds, our spirits with who God is and what he is about in the world. And so when we pray the Lord's Prayer and we pray any prayer that we offer, we always pray with the caveat, thy will be done. And we pray that, that that would not only be done among us, but within us and ultimately through us so that God's purposes could be accomplished in this world. You know, when I would talk confirmation, um, I used to say that there are three ways in which God answers prayer. Uh, sometimes he answers yes. Now, many times we think that's a good answer. But I always warn people, like, for example, if you pray for patience, uh, be ready because God will give you moments to test your patience, maybe bringing a situation or a person. And sometimes that answer isn't always cracked up to what we think it will be. Sometimes it is no. Uh, that's difficult sometimes when we get a no, but we also know that sometimes there are hidden blessings that come from no, because God has a larger perspective than we can, and perhaps he sees things that may keep us from harm, that, that if we actually had that prayer answered, um, that, that it may not work out quite the way we think. And then the most difficult, I always taught my confirmation kids about, was wait. 
that's probably the most difficult because sometimes you'd rather have just a clear yes or no, but it's the wait that sometimes is the most challenging. And it's there that we really need to rely on faith and the promises of God's word that even if we're not getting an answer right now, God is still working and his will still will be done. His kingdom come. As we come tonight uh, to this health crisis, this COVID-19 pandemic that uh, not only we in our nation are experiencing, but around the world, I think the question that we really need to wrestle with tonight is how should we be praying for this? You know, on the one hand, we want to pray for a quick end to this uh, pandemic. We pray for doctors and nurses and all those who are on the front line. We pray for all those who are sick and infected with this disease. We pray for all those who are suffering from the economic impact that uh, is happening. We pray for our national leaders and leaders around the world that they would make wise decisions on how to tackle this. And yet, though, as we pray for this, and it is a good godly prayer that God invites, we always need to pray with that caveat, thy will be done. That perhaps that uh, this COVID-19 health crisis, that God will soon answer yes. For a time, he may answer no, or he may answer wait. Because we need to recognize that uh, there are sometimes hidden purposes that God has in mind when it comes to situations like this. Now, we know that God could bring a pandemic if he wanted to. Uh, that is totally within his power and his will. Uh, now, it's, we need to be careful not to say that the COVID-19 health crisis is something God caused because we don't know if it is or not. Uh, that would be what we would call within the hidden will of God. Uh, we do know that we live in a fallen and broken world. And part of that are that from time to time, as much as we think we are sophisticated and we have technology and medicine, um, disease and sickness can still strike our world and our nation and our communities and even impact our lives. And it's in those moments that uh, we need to recognize that um, sometimes there is a hidden purpose behind these. That God doesn't cause them, but he does use them for his purposes, for his will to be done. I think one of the hidden blessings, if we can see blessings in the midst of this health crisis, is we see families that are connecting together, sometimes for the first time in a long time. People who are able to slow down, people who are able to put aside the busyness of life. And I think one of the great things that really has come out of this is we have seen people probably more spiritually open than any time since 9 11. You know, when times are good, people seem to forget about God because, again, they rely on themselves. But it's in moments like this that it, the human heart is often freed from self reliance. And sometimes the idols that we have built up in our own life, that God uses a health crisis like this to knock some of those down. Uh, we've seen sports that has been taken away. We have seen entertainment that has been taken away. We have seen our freedoms of being able to go where we want and do what we want all taken away. And perhaps it's in this moment that God is using this pandemic to try to get our attentions, to remind us that God is still God, that he is still here that he has a love for the world. And, and we're seeing statistics that are showing, in fact, that there is a spiritual openness and a hunger that we haven't seen in a long time. We have people who are desperate for a word of hope, who are turning to the Bible. And I'm hearing report after report of churches that uh, have had to scramble because of this health crisis and move to things like online worship. And yet they're having more attendance and more people participating in online worship than they ever have done in an in-person uh, service on a Sunday morning. And so while God invites us to, yes, pray for the end of this pandemic, and Lord, please, may it come soon, we pray your will be done, always with a recognition, with the eyes of faith, that God sometimes is about larger things than we know, and that his purposes will be accomplished in his perfect time. But the thing that we need to remember is while we don't always know what is going on in the hidden will of God, there is a very clear purpose that we do have revealed for us in the scriptures. It's another uh, invitation to prayer that we hear from Matthew uh, in which we hear this. Um, 
uh, I urge then, first of all, that actually this isn't from Matthew. I forgot to change that, so my apologies. But we hear this. I urge you then, first of all, that prayers and petitions and intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all those in, in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and holiness. Uh, we're supposed to lift up our prayers, and especially as we do, we remember this day for our national leaders and our state and community leaders, especially as they um, wrestle with this pandemic and try to respond to it appropriately so that we may be able to live our lives in a peaceful and quiet way with godliness and holiness. But, but ultimately, especially as we pray, thy will be done, we remember that this is the ultimate will of God, of what God's kingdom is all about. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And so tonight, we pray for healthcare workers. We pray for national leaders. We pray for those who are on the front lines dealing with this and restaurant owners who are trying to, to, to feed people and, and meat packers who are trying to make sure that we have enough food to be able to be on, on the tables of our, our, our families and, and for police officers who keep us safe and our soldiers who protect our nation. We pray for a quick end to this pandemic. But ultimately, when it's all said and done tonight, we pray, thy will be done. Because God's purpose is that many will come to know him, to know his life, to know his love, to know his salvation, and to know eternity that only he can bring. And so tonight on this National Day of Prayer, we all invite you to lift up your prayers, but especially we pray, thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Guzzi. We appreciate so much your bringing that word to us. In a moment, we're going to begin praying for a variety of topics, our church, government, family, education, business, military, media, and for unity. We'd like to take your special prayer request tonight, too, and in case you didn't hear, if you'll slide your cursor across the face of the screen, you'll see at the bottom it says chat. Feel free to click on that and then type in the chat box that popped up. Uh, everyone, your special prayer request, and I will conclude this evening with those requests. I will not stop in between each of our speakers to introduce them, our prayer leaders, but uh, let me just begin with the first one, though, as we focus on the church, the chairman of our board of elders, uh, Mr. Randy Mayer. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our, our day of prayer. Uh, I'd like to begin with a reading from 1 Kings chapter 8. And in 1 Kings chapter 8, the Ark of the Covenant has just been brought into the uh, temple that Solomon has built. In verse 10, it happened that when the priests came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. For the church, Jesus, we pray that your church would be saturated with glory. Heavenly Father, we, we plead that your presence would fill the churches so that people will be drawn into and saturated in the experience of your presence in your church. That your word would be clearly and courageously taught and obeyed. We pray that our lives will be faithful testimony of your goodness and would be no, and be known by our love as we live to give you glory. Father, we pray that churches would be houses of prayer, overflowing with prayer throughout its weekly services and in the lives of every believer. That all pastors would be deeply rooted in the word of God and would preach the word of God with love and courage to guide and shepherd their flock. Heavenly Father, we ask that pastors, marriages, and families be strengthened and appreciated and supported, not criticized or exhausted, especially in this, this time uh, of this pandemic where the, uh, they're being stretched thin and, and having to learn new, new ways and methods and technologies to bring your word to the people. And Father, we understand that we ask that every believer would understand that they have been called to pray, to love, and to share the gospel as laborers in the mission field of the places they live, work, learn, worship, and play. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. 
Amen. Pass to Mr. Tim Moles. We pray for the government. From Psalm 102, verse 15, so the nations will fear the name of the Lord and all of the kings of the earth your glory. Lord God, we pray your glory would break out like the dawn in and through our government and the governments of all nations. We seek to live under your authority as well as your blessings. And so we pray that America would bless you with our leaders, laws, and lives. Please reveal your presence and power to every person who serves in our local, state, and federal governments. Show them your glory and goodness. Guide them in your ways so that our nation would give you glory. Father, we pray that America would be God-fearing and glorifying, living worthy of the motto, in God we trust. We pray for these things, Father, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. Amen. Now we have a prayer for family and a, a prayer Paul had um, out of Ephesians. Uh, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whose whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Father, we pray that you strengthen the marriages so that husbands and wives would remain faithful to you and to one another. That husbands and wives would love and respect one another with faithfulness and with ever-growing devotion to one another and God. Father, we pray that families would pray, read, and study the Bible worship and serve together, building one another up in faith, love, hope, and truth. We pray that parents would love and nurture their children spiritually, in your word and ways, as well as lovingly providing for their physical, emotional, and mental needs. And Father, we pray that children would grow up in safe and supportive homes, filled with a love Father we we feel that we pray that children would grow up in safe and supportive homes filled with love and principles of Jesus, and that they respect and love their parents. Father, we pray that God would heal the wounds of abandonment and abuse, and that all people would know that they are loved. May every person live an abundant life in divine destiny, authored and perfected by Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Tony, you have to unmute. Duh. <laughs> the reading from Ephesians. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Lord, who gives wisdom, 
knowledge, and understanding. We pray that campuses would be filled with your glory. We know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we pray that every student and educator would live in reverence and relationships with you. Reading from Luke. But Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. That all campuses will be a safe place to learn. That all curriculum taught in every classroom will be true and beneficial to the spiritual as well as the intellectual growth of its students. That there will be at least one Christian club on every campus for prayer, Bible study, and fellowship that will strengthen student believers and glorify God on campus. That the decision makers, administrations, and educators will be supported and make sound decisions that glorify God and serve our students in every area of education. And a reading from Proverbs. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her. We offer all these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm Ken Elam, and I'm going to read the prayers for business. I'm going to start with Colossians uh, 1, 9 through 11. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power. Lord, we pray that you will fill every workspace in our nation with your glory. We pray that all we do, every word, plan, strategy, goal, transaction, and relationship would bring you glory. We give you glory for our knowledge, talents, and opportunities. Business owners and management would lead their employees with godly practices and equity that every worker would know that they have value and influence and therefore will work with excellence as working unto God. That every workplace from the school, military, home, office, store, and more will be filled with those who are praying and living out their faith in Jesus with love, excellence, and respect that believers would know that their work is a part of their worship to God. I give you this blessing. We humbly ask our Heavenly Father God, who is our creator, that in our personal vocations, as we go, we will continue to connect people with Jesus. Also, may God grant us integrity to always do what is right in his sight. Likewise, we endeavor to persevere in living our work life and our personal life in reflection of our spiritual relationship to Jesus. May God bless his elect and the United States of America. Amen and amen. This is Elder Mike Eastman. I have uh, prayers for the military, beginning with the reading from Romans uh, chapter 13, beginning with the first verse. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terrors for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you, for he is God's servant to do you good. Let us pray for our military. 
Jesus, King of Kings, we pray that you would fill our military with your glory, that you would lead our service members, that they would defend freedom and liberty. We ask your protection as they battle evil and shield the weak. Strengthen your warriors in the salvation only found in you. Guide and guard their families as well as their chain of command as they serve at home and on the front lines. We pray that all of our service members would be well prepared and trained spiritually as well as physically, mentally, and emotionally. We pray for, we pray for their marriages, finances, and that their children would be strong spiritually, educationally, socially, and emotionally. We pray that their chain of command would be filled with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in decisions and discerning intelligent infor intelligence information. We pray that God would guard and guide them at home and on the front lines, and that they would be filled with courage and not fear, knowing that God is with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now Tom Church has uh, prayers for the media. Prayers for our media. The first reading I have comes from John chapter 7, verse 18. He who speaks on his own does, does so to gain honor for himself. But he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Lord, our creator, we pray that sound, scripts, and screens would be filled with your glory. We pray, praise you, and give you thanks. You gave us the beauty of this world in sunsets and in the sea, flowers, mountains, and in every person made in your image. You give us gifts and talents that we stewards for your glory. Keep our hearts and our minds filled with light as we choose the voices we listen to and the images that we watch. Heavenly Father, we pray for the leadership of our mainstream media and all their supporting staff, that they would nurture the talents you have given them for good and recognize you as the inspiration behind their actions, that good health and prosperity would be theirs and recognized as a blessing from you, our creator. That all of those who work in Hollywood, New York, Atlanta, and on every set and studio and stage in between would know that Christ followers are praying for them. That the truth and talent given by God and glorifying God will fill the screens, stages, scripts, stations, and songs of our nation. We close with a reading from, first, from Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy of praise, Think about these things. And now David Miner. Our... Thanks, Tom. National unity. Let us each choose to live out the truth that Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 14. Let all that you do be done in love. All that you do. All that you say all that you stand for. Let's do it with love. For perfect love, which comes from Christ, <clears throat> excuse me, casts out all fear. And that is what gives us power to move forward, propelled with his strength, surrounded in his peace, with eyes on the one who gives us breath each day, filled with greater unity in our land. May God bless us with his peace and unity in our nation. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we are needy of you. 
we are aware more than ever of our own weaknesses and of the struggle with dark forces that try hard to divide us and gain more ground. We say no more. We stand our ground. We ask that you would fill us with your spirit of love and unity among believers all across this nation, regardless of political party or persuasion. We ask that you would help us to set aside our differences and look to the greater cause, the cause of Christ. We ask that you would help us to truly live a life of love, welcoming all in the name of Christ. We know that this is only possible through the power of your spirit. So we ask that you would move across our land in fresh ways, with fresh filling and awareness, turning your people back to you. Draw others to come to know you. We thank you that you are always with us and give us great purpose and hope. In your son's name, amen. Allow me to close the evening with a prayer. Lord, we pray that your will be done. That is our theme this evening is we have heard from our keynote speaker. And so we remember those who are on the front lines providing health care, not only for COVID-19, but providing health care every day, day in and day out for whatever circumstance. As we pray for them, we pray that your will be done in their life. Be your hands of healing and help and hope. Lord, for first responders who participate in coming to tragedies and difficult moments, police and fire, and so they, they risk their lives in what they do. And other first responders, paramedics, others that may be better known to us by the uniform they wear or in the street clothes that they have on, that in the moment that they serve, that they serve you, that your will would be done. Lord, for farmers and truckers and food processors, as they move in these days to, to feed a nation uh, that, that needs to be fed in the midst of the shutdown that we've experienced economically. We ask that they return to their workplaces joyfully and with health. And we ask it that it be your will that's done. Lord, for families impacted by this virus, this contagion that not only covers our nation, but the world, that, uh, that they would see health. And if that is not to be, then that you would give them strength to bear the burdens that they have in life, even as they come even today into your nearer presence, that they would know and see your glorious face. For others that we know that have dealt with illness in recent days, and continue on a path of recovery. Debbie and Jay come to mind. Many others too, who are in all of our hearts individually and personally. Lord, on Sunday we pause to give thanks to you for our mothers, for moms. Every one of us has a mom. Whether she's still alive or now sainted with you, they're as close as the hand that we place on our heart and feel it beating and know that they participated with you in extending life to us. And so we pause to give you thanks for them. The participants who've come this evening, that as they leave this conversation tonight in this time of, of great prayer, that they would be strengthened, that they would come to a night of rest, and in the day that you give them tomorrow, they would see the opportunity to open their front door and as they step outside to thank you for this great land and the opportunities that we have. And not to be so focused on that which is not available to us at this moment, but to celebrate all the goodness that you have poured into us. In all of it, we ask that your will be done. We thank you for our guest speaker and for the efforts that Linda has placed in putting together the activities for this evening and others who support it. And all of this, as we join our voices and pray together, our Father 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming this evening. Pastor Guzzi, do you have any closing words for us? No, I just want to uh, encourage all of us. Let's, uh, let us continue to come before God. Um, you know, again, uh, sometimes it's a quick yes. Sometimes it's a no, and sometimes it's wait. But that doesn't mean that uh, we are supposed to give up praying, even if uh, his answer comes for a long time. Uh, and so I just want to encourage all of us, especially in the midst of this health crisis, let us continue to pray for first responders, our leaders, our neighbors, for our churches, and, uh, and for our families. And uh, all the while trusting that um, God's will will be done and that his perfect will um, will be accomplished uh, in his time. And uh, with that, I just want to encourage all of you, uh, be at peace. Know that he's, God is still God. He's still in charge uh, in whatever's happening. And um, with that, do you mind if I say a blessing on everybody tonight? Uh, sure. And then we're going to, and, and the final, final word we'll give to Linda after that in awesome. case she has some information for us that we need to hear. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to say a blessing, the, the doxology to all of you, um, uh, or not doxology, just the blessing to all of you. Uh, and um, whenever I think about blessing, I think about it as the divine favor of God being uh, a, placed upon a person's life. And so receive the divine favor of God tonight. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his countenance and grant you his perfect peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Linda, any, yeah, unmute your mic and any closing words? I would just like to say thank you again for participating in this event. I truly believe that um, there is power in prayer, especially as we all come together as the body of Christ. I believe God has heard our prayers and God will answer our prayers. As um, Pastor Guzzi said in his time and in his perfect will for our lives and the lives of everyone on this earth. Um, Pastor, did you want to tell about the event that's happening sure. this evening? Okay. At eight o'clock on Daystar and other choices, you may have to go on the internet to ser search for the location that works best for you with the media streaming that you may personally have. But the National Day of Prayer event for the country will take place from eight to 10 o'clock this evening with mm -hmm. a variety of stars and other participants. Uh, as, so as you have an opportunity, we certainly welcome you to make those connections. Um, the local events that are taking place usually at courthouse steps and at city halls and town halls and county courthouses are not taking place around the country today because of, in most every state, the stay-at-home orders that governors have in force at this time. Mm -hmm. Hence the event that we've had this evening this way. <laughs> and because of the value and the importance of prayer, the opportunity to meet in still a national way at eight o'clock tonight. And that's in about 10 or 15 minutes. So as you have opportunity, feel free to connect. Uh, just go on the internet and search for National Day of Prayer event uh, televised and you'll find uh, what you need. Thank you. Lord bless and keep you. Good night.